Welcome back to the Road to City Hall. My next guest is in the middle of a very busy freshman year in Congress. He's a member of both the Judiciary and the Budget Committees. He's also taking the fight over the NYPD's controversial stop and frisk tactic to the Capitol. He recently pushed U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder on whether or not the Federal Justice Department plans to investigate stop and frisk. Joining me to talk about that topic, as well as the progress of immigration reform legislation and more, we've got Hakeem Jeffries, congressman from Brooklyn and Queens. Welcome back to the program. Good to see you. Eric, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Well, let's start with, uh, let's start with Eric Holder. You um, sort of pushed him a little bit. We don't normally see freshman members of Congress talking with the uh, attorney general, but he was there before what I imagine was a routine kind of an oversight hearing. And um, you, you sort of asked him about what was going on in New York City. What made you decide to do that? Yeah, it was a Justice Department oversight hearing uh, where the Attorney General came to testify before the Judiciary Committee. Uh, and I had an opportunity to ask a wide range of potential questions on the AP situation, the IRS situation, uh, any number of things that the Justice Department has jurisdiction over and that are hot button issues down in Washington, D.C. But I decided uh, that it made sense about a year ago on June 6th a few members of the congressional delegation, I was still in the legislature, met with Attorney General Eric Holder to ask him uh, to take a hard look into the potential civil rights and civil liberties violations uh, that take place at the hands of the NYPD stop and frisk aggressive program. And almost a year had passed and we hadn't heard anything from the Justice Department, so I decided that it was an appropriate opportunity to lay out the case as for why Justice Department intervention was necessary, mm -hmm. given what I view as, you know, the violations of civil rights and civil liberties that hundreds of thousands of innocent law-abiding individuals have to suffer from who've done nothing wrong but are having their Fourth Amendment rights uh, uh, violated in many different well, you, ways. You certainly put it on the radar screen for him that day. Has the Justice Department showed any interest in this? Have they filed briefs in this ongoing uh, case before Sh uh, uh, Judge Shindlin? Yeah, he indicated that uh, he was aware of the ongoing case mm -hmm. uh, and that he expected to come to some resolution shortly, mm -hmm. but that he understood uh, that it was a matter of great significance and that it was at least appropriate for the Justice Department to come up with a timely decision sometime sooner rather than later. Our Justice Department has investigated the Newark Police Department, the Detroit Police Department, the San Juan Police Department, the New Orleans Police Department, the Police Department in Prince George's County. There's at least a reasonable case to be made mm. as it relates to the aggressive stop and frisk activity and some of the other things that we've seen here in New York City that a preliminary inquiry is, is appropriate. Okay, let me ask you about some of your other committee uh, duties on the budget committee. What effect is the sequester having from, from your point of view? What's the, let, let's ask the New York question, I guess, to quote Ray Kelly. Uh, how, how's this going to affect New York City? What are you seeing? Well, I have a very diverse district, including uh, more public housing developments than almost any other congressional district in the nation. One of the impacts of sequestration is that NYCHA uh, has lost out on about $190 million in funding. Now, we know that the condition of many NYCHA buildings are already subpar and that we've got residents who are living in very difficult, often inhumane conditions. Sequestration in this instance makes the bad situation worse. There are cuts to Head Start, cuts to Meals on Wheels programs, mm. and many other social safety net uh, programs that are important to the people that I represent in Brooklyn and Queens, to New Yorkers, and to many across the country. Unfortunately, Congress made a decision on sequestration to rescue aggrieved air travelers from the sequestration battlefield, sure. but leave seniors and children and working families, middle class folks and others uh, to still deal with the consequences. That's why I voted against uh, the air traffic rescue bill, because I didn't think it was appropriate to deal with one aspect of sequestration while vulnerable New Yorkers still have issues that need to be addressed. Well, let me ask you about another hot button issue, of course, which is uh, immigration reform. Do you think we're going to get immigration reform? I do think we will get immigration reform. I'm cautiously optimistic. Senator Schumer has done a tremendous job in leading a bipartisan effort uh, in the Senate. It will come before the Judiciary Committee at some point. I'm also the co-chair of the Congressional Black Caucus Task Force on Immigration Reform. We stand behind a robust pathway towards citizenship uh, that's tough but it's attainable. It's the American way. We in New York City know the value that immigrants who come from all over the world, who are hardworking, family-oriented, uh, entrepreneurial, contribute to the city. They've contributed to the country, 
and it will be the right thing to do for our democracy and for our economy to get comprehensive you, immigration. You think it'll get done this year? I think there's a good chance that it'll get done this year. Mm -hmm. The key is for the Senate to pass a strong bill that has the support of the president and the American people to then send it over to the House of Representatives where there uh, is some hostile uh, figures who will oppose it. Mm -hmm. But the leadership, Speaker Boehner and Majority Leader Eric Cantor, have signaled in different ways the appropriateness of dealing with this issue. Okay. That's why I'm optimistic. Very good. And, of course, the politics will change next year because it is an election year for all of you members of Congress. Um, in our last minute, let me ask you about some local politics. Yeah. Um, member of the Judiciary Committee, a attorney in good standing and so forth, and your good friend Ken Thompson running for uh, Kings County District Attorney. I was wondering if you have endorsed in that race. Yeah, I haven't made a decision in that race, although Ken is running a strong race. He's incredibly qualified, has a wonderful story to tell. Uh, the son of a single mom who was a police officer, one of the first African-American uh, women on the police force, went on to get incredibly well-educated, established law practices, done some great things in the civil rights space. You know, I'll make a decision on that race at the appropriate time. Certainly, there's been a lot of media coverage about some of the things that have taken place at the DA's office. We'll have to sort through it all, see what the facts are, uh, and, and, and move forward at the And, at the, and right uh, time. the other Thompson, Bill Thompson, uh, you were quoted in the Times today as one of the people who's a little uh, troubled, it sounds like, about his stance on stop and frisk. Well, I actually think that he's striking the appropriate balance. There's got to be uh, a balance between effective law enforcement that keeps the city safe, but also a healthy respect for civil rights and civil liberties in our democracy. Uh, he's trying to carve out a policy that will both continue the dramatic decline in crime, it appears, uh, but also address the stop and frisk issue. All of the mayoral candidates need to do it. It's going to be uh, in a very interesting race. I think that um, whoever we decide to select in the post-Bloomberg Giuliani era is going to have a challenge on their hands, both to continue some of the effective things that the previous administration has done, but also change direction in ways that will benefit outer borough communities such as the one I represent. Okay, very good. We're going to leave it there for now. At a later date, we're going to talk about uh, the rebuilding efforts after Hurricane Sandy, especially in the Howard Beach part of your district. But for now, we will say goodnight. Thank